What's up guys, are you about to launch your product but have zero idea on what to do or what that looks like? Maybe you have a product already and it's not selling too hot right now and you need a sustainable plan to get sustainable sales. And in this video, I'm gonna show you a complete walkthrough of how to, to set up a launch plan, how, what the framework is, how I've done it with 50 plus private label products so we don't have to spend thousands on advertising or if we get our product on Amazon, it just sits there and we don't know what to do and we're just praying for sales. No, we need a game plan when we launch our product on Amazon. So whether you're just about to launch a product or you're gonna do that in the future or if you have a product already, we can still do this by putting a real plan in place to make sure our product actually has a chance to do this on Amazon. The, the days of us just throwing a product up there on Amazon and it, you know, turning into thousands of sales with 40% margins right away, that, that's over. You need a proven strategy to actually do this, okay? So I'm gonna walk you through that here today. If you guys don't know who I am, my name is Cameron James. I've started over 50 plus private label products on Amazon myself and started multiple six and seven figure Amazon businesses. I definitely grab a pen and paper. Uh, if you are a note taker, put your phone on do not disturb because this is actually going to be useful if you wanna sell something on Amazon. I'm gonna show you how to put in you know, less time, less stress to get more out and actually have a game plan that's gonna be above 99% of the competition. So let's hop on my screen. I'll show you exactly how to do that. All right, guys. So this is a full guide I put together for us uh, today. Uh, just I've learned my lesson over and over again. My handwriting's trash. So I didn't want to write this all out for you guys because that was my original plan. But I, again, it's my handwriting's not getting any better. So I put this together. I had it made up nicely for us so we can better uh, dig into to everything and you guys can uh, take more value in. Uh, so again, just like I talked about, we're going to talk about how to launch an FBA product. And this can be a full tutorial going through step by step of everything we need to know. So all my strategies, all my frameworks, everything like that of how I do it in my thought process. Uh, so hopefully you guys find this valuable. But uh, first, I just want to cover what we're going to go over that way, you know exactly what to expect and make sure this is this is right for you. So we're going to go through pre launch preparation. So what do we need to be prepared for? Like what are the what's the checklist we need to have uh, taken care of before we even launch our product? That's very, very important to make sure we do this. Because again, think of that in terms of, you know, Rafael Nadal, who's going to a tennis match, he doesn't bring his tennis shoes, he doesn't bring his tennis racket, he doesn't bring all the materials he needs. Okay, then how is he going to play tennis, right? Same thing here. That's a terrible analogy. But you guys know what I'm saying there, we need to do things and be prepared before we launch or else it won't go well. Okay, so that's what we're going to talk about there. Next, the one goal of launching. So we need to identify our goal, just like in any business endeavor, we need to understand like what we're aiming for. If we don't have something to aim for, we're never going to reach where we want to go. So, you know, writing down our goal, understanding our goal, identifying our goal gives us something to shoot for, right? So this is kind of what we need to identify first. Next, only two launching frameworks. So kind of my, my launching framework of how I do this, how my thought process works and everything like that. And then next, how to create a full launch plan. Okay, so that's what we're gonna go through guys. So this one should be a good one for you guys uh, and get you above 99% of the competition here. Again, just being more prepared, having more knowledge, having a real plan. Again, people don't wanna do this in business. So if we do the hard stuff, do what we should do, then we're gonna be above everyone who doesn't put that effort in. So this is what this is guys. So. We need to talk about pre-launch preparation first, okay? So I'm gonna bring my little highlighter out here uh, so we can cover these things. And just, uh, I'm gonna read over a lot of this stuff, so I apologize, but I just wanna make sure I don't miss anything, and then I'll kinda of go off tangent going deeper into subjects. But again, I put this together so I wouldn't miss anything. Uh, so I don't, uh, don't wanna go off script here a little bit. So next, first I wanna talk about what is needed before we even launch. If we don't have these steps taken care of before launch, we will fail regardless of how good our launch plan is. Again, just like I talked about guys, if we don't do these steps, there's no point in doing a launch plan. So we need to talk about these first. Uh, so before we go through these tactics and strategy, we need to go through the foundation, okay? I talk about the foundation a lot in business and this Amazon business is like, we need to set ourselves up to succeed first and then everything we build on top of it won't fall down, won't collapse and we'll be able to build something really cool on top of it okay again cheesy but i'm a cheesy nerdy engineering type dude so that's just kind of that's where my brain goes uh, so the first thing we talk about for pre-launch preparation is a supreme listing so these are all things we need to make sure we're giving ourselves the best chance to succeed okay again just kind of talking about basics here if we don't have a really good listing we drive traffic to it well, no one's going to convert if they think it's a crappy product, the the photos are terrible, things like that. So we need to talk about like what goes into a supreme listing to make sure our conversion rate goes up as much as possible. So we're being as efficient as possible and we're going to outpace the other people. OK, so next I want to talk about SEO and keyword indexing. So this is big uh, from the fact of we need to have people find us. So if say we make the best product in the world, we get it manufactured and it's best quality in the world. And all of a sudden we got this product that's the top of its niche. 
Well, that doesn't freaking matter if no one can find it, okay? If someone types it in, a keyword on Amazon, and it doesn't populate, okay, then there's no point. No one's ever gonna find it and know it's the best product in the world. Okay, so we need to make sure that we have the right SEO, the right keyword indexing in our titles, bullets, description, and backend, okay? So I use Helium 10 Cerebro uh, in the keyword tools here. So some of the stuff I'm gonna go over uh, in great detail, some of the stuff I'm gonna expect you guys to, to kind of go out on your own, but Helium 10 Cerebro, what this does is it will pull keywords from your competitors and see what they're ranking for, see where everything's at. I have tons of videos on this on my channel as well if you want to get deeper into this but essentially you can pull these keywords from them from the top competitors make sure that you have all the keywords that are best in your niche in your title in your bullets in your description and in your back end to make sure that you're indexing for all these keywords we want okay next i want to talk about actual copywriting and bullets so this doesn't get talked about nearly enough about amazon fba products okay so we need to write actual copy guys so people just this goes ab above their head. They don't want to think about it, anything like that. So again, think about it this way. If we're finally getting traffic to our listing through this method, okay, now the traffic really doesn't matter if they don't convert and how we convert them better. One step is actually copywriting in the bullets. Okay. And then description to get the customers to take action. So we need to learn to speak to your target demographic and use their language. Okay. So the people who are in the craft niche, they, they have different lingo. So say we go into the hunting niche and we're selling some hunting gear and we start describing it like it's like this elegant, like an elegant purse or a Gucci bag or something like that. I know I wish I had a better example off the top of my head, but if we start speaking like that, like this elegant, uh, you know, seven ply, <laughs> seven ply, 7,000 thread fabric in this, this Estonia pink, you know, is the top of the line, something like that. I, I know I sound ridiculous and I probably offended a few people, but anyways, you guys know what I'm saying there. The hunting niche would be like, what are you talking about? Like, no, I want, I care about the utility of this thing. I care about the durability of this thing. I don't care about the type of Estonia pink you're using. And I, I just made that up by the way, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying here? We need to understand the customer, like what language they use and in every niche, they use different language. So we can do this by going into other listings uh, on Amazon and, and reading the descriptions, reading the reviews. We can do this by going into our niche's favorite blogs or favorite places on the internet, whether that's Reddit, uh, Discord, other YouTube channels, articles, so on. So we can understand like how that demographic speaks. And so we can speak back to them in their own language, right? We don't go to someone who speaks Spanish and, and speak English to them. They're not going to understand what we're saying. Same thing here. Okay. Next, highlight benefits, not features. Okay. So people fall in this trap all the freaking time. People don't care about the features of things, okay? They don't care that it's a nine volt battery. They care about what that nine volt battery does for them, okay? And that nine volt battery helps them save money from not changing batteries all the time, helps them save time because they're not you know, running out of juice when they really need it the most. So we need to talk about highlighting benefits there, guys. So the best way to do this is just write down the feature, right? So features are really easy. Like people get most excited about the features when they're selling their, their products. So write these features down and then ask yourself, what does this feature do? Like, what is the benefit of this feature? And just keep going down this line and you'll come up with all these ideas like, well, this thing saves time this way, or this saves money this way, or this is more durable this way, or this is more comfortable this way. Like, what does this do for the consumer? Okay. Next, concise and powerful. Longer is not always better. So what I mean by this, and look at my highlighting skills, uh, terrible too. So it gives you a gist of what my handwriting would be like. Uh, so concise and powerful. So don't write these blocky bullets and these blocky descriptions. No, powerful, concise. Really try to say what you want to get through in less words. So less is more in this example. So, you know, that way they're not having to read a whole paragraph to get what your point is. People won't read a paragraph. If, it, if it's like 10 words, people can glance it, get that powerful statement, actually be moved by it, you know, feel some emotion and take action. Next is A plus content. So you need to be brand registered to get this, but you can do this on your listing, display more graphics, display more content, and it looks more professional overall. This is a huge bonus in my eye, but maybe not entirely necessarily at first, but if you're already getting brand registered, I suggest you do that for sure. Okay. So moving down here a bit, a little bit. So photos with purpose. 
So do you use lifestyles, infographics, or 3D renderings? This one's big guys, like depending on your niche, you're gonna use different things, right? If you're selling a hat, you're gonna have mostly lifestyles because people wanna feel and see what they look like with that hat. If we're selling something with more utility, we might need more infographics to display those benefits of these new features or have 3D renderings so we can do a lot more things with our, our product and put it in weird places uh, on those infographics. So we need to identify what's best in our niche. So from things like fashion, things like that, we need lifestyles, where as other products, I love infographics and most products out there that aren't, you know, design wear or really pushing the envelope when it comes to like, we need to really get them to feel what it looked like if they were doing it right with beautiful models, you know, beautiful men, things like that, who are, you know, wearing that stuff or using that stuff. There's that's still, there's a place for that in most products still, but the thing is those are really expensive. Where if infographics, we can kind of scale down the cost and we can highlight the big benefits, the big selling points of our product. So our customers can take that away in the first two to three images. Okay. So that's what I'm talking about right here with lifestyles infographics, three renderings. We need to identify what is best for us in that regard. Uh, next, what benefits do your photos highlight? Just what I was talking about here. So even if we do lifestyles and have models, we need to be having them do something that displays a benefit of our product, you know, saving time, uh, you know, making life easier, being more comfortable, looking better, right? That's a benefit for sure. That's why infographics are so great because if your product is 10 times better than the other guys because it has this certain feature, we can highlight that on the second infographic on the page. Obviously, we're not gonna talk about that feature. We're gonna talk about that benefit that feature creates right so we're going to talk about that benefit and it's because of that feature and this is huge because most people on amazon they don't even read anything on the listing they just look at photos so photos are the, by far the biggest thing we need to worry about when it comes to our amazon listing so we don't can't cheap out here guys next how do you tell them that everything we need to know in the first three photos ideally the first three here so in our photos just like i talked about right there how do we get them to understand pretty much our bullet points right like our main benefits of what we're trying to talk to them about get them to sell get them to realize that we're five dollars more expensive and worth it than the other competitors even though we have zero reviews and we're more expensive we provide that much more benefit so in those things obviously we want to describe those in the bullets but also we need to get them in the photos and the elements in some way some fashion okay because this is huge and I'm gonna use the example here. I use it all the time. My girlfriend probably wouldn't like this. Hopefully she doesn't watch this, but I watch her shopping habits on Amazon. This is what she does. She's looking for something. She clicks one, one item while she's going down the list after she searches it, scrolls through the first three photos. Nah, X is out, goes to the next one, scrolls through the next three photos. Exits out. Okay, so we just understanding what most consumers do. They just look at the photos. So how in the first three photos do we get them to know that our product's worth five dollars more than the other guys? Know it's worth it. Know it's what they're looking for. Know it has the the selling points that they're looking for. Okay, and this comes down to I know this is kind of top level right now, but. If we read through uh, the other listings, read through the bad reviews, get to know our customer a lot more, we start to understand what they actually want. Okay, this is huge. People don't go deep enough in this, but we need to go deeper in our listing. We need to go deeper into the copy, deeper into knowing our customer. And then this becomes second nature. So when we really understand our customer, we're like, oh, this is the three things they're looking for. This is gonna go in our top three infographics. They're gonna be the top of our photos. Okay, so when they scroll through, they know. All right, guys. So it's not about what you think it's important. It's about what the consumer thinks is important. Next, this is the worst place. Be cheap or lazy. I talked about that a little bit already, but I want to really hammer that point down. You cannot skimp out here, guys. I know you don't have to pay an arm and leg for this service. And that's why infographics and 3D renderings are awesome because you can probably get this down to 50 bucks, 100 bucks a photo here or lifestyles, a full set of those could cost up to $600, $1,200, some of that range. But again, this is one place you cannot skimp out even if they don't admit it subconsciously they're judging your product based on the photo quality okay next video on your listing okay so this is something you will have to hire out okay unless you have a background in videography uh definitely just i hire this out personally get someone that understands maybe the amazon market understands the e-commerce market to make these videos for you uh you still need to be involved because you know your target customer better than anyone you hire to create your video okay so if you don't give them direction they're just going to take up whatever they think is cool, whatever they think is special, they're gonna do themselves. So you need to give them a direction and be like, okay, I know my three best selling points are X, Y, Z. These are the things we really need to hammer home throughout this video, really showing these benefits of my product during this video. 
okay? Uh, so this one is extra, but video on our listing is huge. Uh, it helps conversions here uh, and my terrible highlighting skills uh, continue. Next, number two for pre-launch strategy here. Uh, so insane product value and quality. So this doesn't apply to everybody uh, watching this probably because your full order might already be in, but definitely listen up uh, because this is great to know for future launches and products and to know when to potentially call it quits on your current product, okay? So understanding this will help you regardless of where you're at in the pre-launch process, whether you have a product or you're about to get a product uh, already. So the first thing I wanna talk about here really to get deeper into insane product value and quality is you need to take your time, okay? So you can't just rush a product idea, you can't just rush a, a product creation, whether you're trying to improve it or whatever you're trying to do. So you need to take your time, you cannot rush this, cut corners, anything like that. And it has to be a market fit. That's the first thing. Like if it doesn't have the demand you're looking for, which we all know, simple economics, most people talk about that in Amazon first is, you know, we were looking for products with high demand and, and you know, low supply. Fantastic, yes, that has something to do with market fit. But also when we're starting to create new product ideas, create new value for our products, we need to make sure that a customer actually wants that, right? I'll use this example as I'm building a little home gym out in my garage and I got these big, large gym mats so we can put my you know squat rack on it and I'm not gonna be on the dirty you know garage floor, everything like that. Well, I opened this package up, I didn't even know this. So it's a big, long mat, the package was, was you know, Pretty, pretty big, probably nine feet long, everything like that. And there's just a jump rope in there. I was like, okay, sweet. So maybe to one person or two people, that's really cool, but I already had a jump rope. I ordered two of these mats. So now I have three freaking jump ropes that I don't need. So to me, it's just like, this is a waste of bundling. People fall into the mistake that if they just bundle a bunch of stuff together, like people are gonna love it because it's, it's more things, it's more objects. No, we need to identify for someone with a large mat, like what else possibly could they want? Like doesn't like jump rope. Yeah, you're kind of in the same niche, but did you really read the reviews? Is, is there anything they're really complaining about? What else are they buying with this? Okay. I guarantee there's not a lot of people out there buying mats and then buying a jump rope at the same time. No, if you're buying mats, you probably already have a jump rope already and you're trying to take the next level in your gym. So understanding your customer's journey essentially, or where they're at is huge. Maybe they gave me uh, so the biggest issue I had with my mat is when it was rolled up when they delivered to me, I flattened it out and it just curled up and then it kind of moves all over the gym and kind of slides around a little bit. So maybe they gave me some extra uh, things to put on the corners to one, stick it to the ground so it doesn't move, and two, so the corners stay down and it actually flattens out over time. Whereas I had to take my kettlebells and put it in each corner. So that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. I don't want the freaking jump rope. I have three jump ropes, I don't want it, <laughs> okay? And a lot of customers feel the same way when they buy a random product on Amazon and they see this extra thing and they're like, I don't care, I, I really don't care. And the same thing is, you know, you advertise that on your listing and it's like, they they don't care about that. We need something else. They, they is pretty much if they care about the first product they're looking for care just as much as that item as they do the second item you're going to give them for free or whatever it may be bundling. Okay. Bundling is one way to, to add value to there's other ways to do it. We can just pick a product better. Uh, we can do all sorts of things and really get to know the customer. So we, that's what I'm talking about market fit. So getting to know your customer will really help you get that market fit, you know, to understand like what they actually want, whether that is more stuff or it's just better features or whatever it may be, okay? Next, take the time to create a five-star review quality and so much value would be stupid for them to pick someone else's over yours. Okay, this is again, going deeper into understanding your customer and what they want. So we need to make sure that we, product quality, obviously our basics need to be covered with our manufacturer. We need to make sure that we've, we felt samples in our hands. We've we tested out the weak points in our product and we maybe refined it a few times and hopefully before you got the sample, you review find these points because you you got deep into the, the bad one-star reviews for your other products, everything like that, the competitor's products, and you're able to put together something really great. And you get a sample like, okay, now you're just changing one or two things to make sure that it's even better. So we need to make sure we have five-star review quality because we have one to two-star review quality. This thing's all over, it just doesn't work. Same thing with market fit. If we don't have a market fit and there's no demand for our product, it's all over, nothing works here. So these are, again, pre-launch, preparations we need to make. And this will help you obviously understand what products you bring on the market. And if you're going too far with the product you already have, maybe it doesn't fit this criteria. And that way you're not spending thousands of advertising for six months trying to you know beat your head against a brick wall and nothing's gonna work for that product, okay? So take your time. And then if you you know understand your market fit, I, I've said this a hundred times now with market fit, but then you can provide value that it would be stupid for them not to pick someone else's over yours, okay? So if you're a similar price or maybe $5 more, but you're providing twice as much value, that's an easy decision. Very easy because you solve, they, they, they went to your page 
trying to solve one problem. They needed this. Well, you ended up solving two of their problems. They, they didn't even know they had the second problem, but you solved it for them because you understood their problem so well. You understood where that customer was coming from so well. So you solved two problems with them without even, without even really them looking for that. Okay, they're gonna pick yours over that other guy's every single time. They'd be stupid not to. Okay, that's what I'm talking about there. So next, I want to talk about a little story of Raul hitting 20K, uh, his second month on Amazon. So Raul is a client of mine, and he was kind of a, a rare case. And I want to talk about why he was such a rare case and why he got results so fast. So Raul hit 20,000 a month on Amazon, his second month selling. That's that's crazy. That's awesome. That's usually not the results you get right away. It usually takes a little longer than that to build a good foundation for the business. But I was looking into him. I was like, okay, why, why did he hit this? Like, what was the difference between some of the other clients I work with that take three to four months to get here and he got here in two? Well, it's because he obsessed over the product. He was, you know, he got the product at home. He was, you know, messing with it, making sure it fit perfectly, make sure that it worked perfectly, make sure it, you know, essentially, perfected the product, took the time, took the month or two that no one talks about before he even launched this product to make sure the product was perfect, okay? And again, I, I shouldn't use the word perfect here because we're never gonna be perfect. There's always gonna be improvements to be made, but he took the time to be 99% better than everyone else on the market. And that's what shown through. So when he started selling that product, he, he knew it had perfect market fit because it's what people wanted. He was adding more value and the product quality was definitely five stars. Well then, after a month, this thing took off because it provided more value than everyone else. Then his second month, then it just really hit the hit the walls, then really hit the, the roller coaster ride up and it, it did really well. So that was my biggest takeaway from Raul's story was he obsessed over the product quality, he obsessed over the market fit of his product. And that's what shown through. And that's what gave him 20K in his second month on Amazon. People like to skip that part because it's, it's hard. It is hard. But if you do the hard stuff that no one else wants to do, that's how you'd be successful in this business. Uh, third, guys, is inspections here. So inspections is huge just from the fact of we need five-star review quality, right? So getting your products inspected uh, at the warehouse is great to make sure that all these benefits uh, are actually coming through that you're trying to you know provide for the customer after all the research you've done and making sure that you're not putting crappy products out there, which can lead to one-star reviews and then ultimately lead in your failure, okay? So get inspections done, guys. It's $100 to $200. It's, it's super cheap and uh, it's just, it's, it's a no brainer. Okay. I know it's a lot of work a little bit, but once you find a really good company, uh, it's really easy to do that. I just find someone with word of mouth uh, to find that company. I do have some in my, my cheat sheet, which will be linked underneath this next idiot proof, the product packaging. Uh, so how do we essentially prevent things out of our control from happening to get us one star reviews? Again, if we get one star reviews, this whole thing's over. So if your items are a little fragile, uh, if it can damage easy, uh, if presentation really matters, things like that. How do we idiot proof our product? Okay, just think of it this way. So this is just, this is from five years experience guys, because I, I understand like, this is so frustrating when I get one star reviews when it wasn't my fault, it was someone else's fault. And you gotta take responsibility for it. It's like, okay, how can I be better to prevent this from happening? And I call it idiot proofing and it's thinking this way. It's okay, imagine the manufacturer in China having the worst day ever. Imagine the people who are shipping over uh, in sea freight having the worst day ever. Imagine the Amazon warehouse uh, staff having a terrible day. His girlfriend just broke up with him. Uh, maybe he's just, you know, his dog died or something crazy happened like that. And he's kicking your box around. Same thing in China, same thing. You coming from sea freight or wherever you're getting it manufactured, right? So how do we make sure if someone is having a bad day and kicking your box around that it doesn't damage, doesn't break, doesn't come in bad quality to get one star reviews? Okay. This does happen guys. It's just, it's just the way it works. There's humans working behind the scenes uh, on our packaging, uh, moving our stuff around deliver the UPS driver, right? There's so many touch points for our product. So how do we idiot proof the packaging so it doesn't break? Uh, it doesn't lose durability, uh, everything like that. Well, we idiot proof it uh, by making sure that we get the packaging delivered to us. We kind of look at it and say like, okay, so this is what needs to be done. If I kick this around, it won't be damaged. So we really need to understand how we do that, whether it's more bubble wrap or uh, it's, you know, it's in a bigger box and it's got corners that stabilize it and gives it a, it gives it about an inch on each side that, you know, it can't be damaged that way. Uh, so think about that way. I, you know, I can't go into many uh, great examples here, just the fact of every product's different, but idiot proofing your packaging, you know what that looks like because you can kick around the box yourself. Cool thing an inspection service do, they they will do drop tests. So they'll go on a ladder. It's really cool because they usually take videos of it and they'll go up and they'll grab your package or your master carton and they'll drop it from like 
eight feet high. And you'll see when it falls, how it does, how it handles. Is it idiot proof? That's a great way to see if your product's idiot proof or not. All right, so the next part of this is the one goal of launching, okay? So hang with me here. We're gonna get to the juicy stuff, the fun stuff down below, the strategies, everything like this, but we need to cover this stuff, the basics, the foundation for this actually to work. Otherwise, we don't cover this stuff. It doesn't matter anyways. Any strategy work is just gonna fail. So we have to cover this stuff. So uh, if you guys like this so far, make sure you hit that like button. Let me know in the comments, but let's keep going here. So the one goal of launching, okay? So this is huge. Uh, we only have one goal when it comes to launching our product. So I'm gonna read through this, make sure I don't miss anything and go deeper into things that really, really need to be go deeper into, okay? So let us break down what the goal one, the one goal is. First, we have to ask, why are we launching? Okay, so why are we launching? What's the purpose of this? Okay, I know it seems simple, but let's just break it down in simple terms. Because we want organic sales. That's, that's the purpose, right? So why do we want organic sales? We want organic sales where we make full price sales with no ad spend eating away at our profit margin, okay? So really when it comes down to it, we want organic sales to make the most money as possible, okay? AKA, we wanna make more, much more money, okay? Uh, which I cover there. So next, with organic sales, we also will continue to get sales daily while we sleep, okay? So that's the cool thing about organic sales. So we don't need to keep paying people to get our sales for us and everything like that. When we get into organic sales land, we start to rank up. These things happen when our sleep. These things happen more passively in their full price. So we're making 30 to 40% margins on each sale. So this is where we really make the money and it really becomes less effort, less stressful, and we have a real business and this is kind of where really cool things happen. So what I mean by this, I kind of broke it down into these little guys right here, is it means sustainable and slightly passive, and it means less work in, more sales out when we get to this organic place uh, in our business. Okay, so once we get to this point, I call it getting over the hump. Okay, this is where the business changes lives. So this is really cool because once we get over this hump that I call it, it's like, okay, we're on bottom of page two or something like that. We keep ranking up with these strategies that I'm gonna go over. And then once we get over the hump, get to rank number one, rank two, rank three, rank four, uh, in the organic rankings for these keywords, then we're over the hump. Then these sales, they start to exponentially go, right? So it's just like this straight line where it's trying to try and get one or two sales more. Then all of a sudden we get over the hump and boom, it goes exponential. And we're getting these sales during our sleep. We're getting these full priced organic sales where we're starting to get a lot more money back. Instead of paying three to $4 each sale we get with ads, we're getting full price sales where we save that $4 per sale, okay? So this is where the Amazon business changed lives. So we need it, this is why we're identifying this goal of like what we're trying to work towards, okay? So how do we get organic sales? That's the next question here. So we rank up on Amazon in the customer search results for specific keywords that customers are using to search and buy our product, okay? So essentially what I just said, we need to rank up in the customer search results. So what are people using to search for our type of product on Amazon and then rank up organically in those search results so we show up first and we get purchased because we're up there and they can actually see us. So we do this by doing one thing, our, our one goal here, and that's increasing sales velocity. So how do we do this? Okay, so the, we, we, you kind of see how we logically broke this down into what things really like, what matters, okay? We broke it down in a really simple elementary way to define our goal, and that is increasing sales velocity, okay? So you can see how we kind of broke that down in a, in a logical, simple way to kind of, you know, essentially just layer by layer to understand why we're actually doing this, which is important, okay? So why we're launching is because we want, we want organic sales. So if I go down here, we want organic sales. How do we rank up? How do we launch? Uh, how do we get organic sales? And that's the one goal of launching, which is increasing sales velocity. So hopefully that makes sense, guys. So essentially we want organic sales because we make more money. How do we get organic sales? We get up in the, the keyword search. We rank up a little higher. How do we do that? We increase our sales velocity. So that is our one goal of launching. Okay, so really breaking it down, like what we're trying to do, what is our one big domino that if we tip over, we're gonna get to where we wanna go and get more organic sales. Uh, so increasing sales velocity, we could do this in, in multiple ways here if I zoom in a little bit. So we can do this generally here, guys. And what I mean by this is if we boost our sales velocity all across the map, we're just gonna, you know, we're gonna move up a little bit. This is increases our sales velocity across the board and we'll just get a bump across all the keywords we, we index for again, which we'll get deeper into that here in a second. Or we can do it keyword specific, which just means that we're targeting a certain keyword to rank up on that keyword faster. Okay, so if we identify a keyword that like, hey, if we rank to the top spot for this, we're gonna do very, very well and get a lot of sales here because one, 
we're very relevant for this keyword and two it gets enough search volume where it's going to provide us enough traffic okay so just a note here just to, again redefining what this all means is if we increase our sales velocity higher than the competitors then over time we will outrank them okay so this is why the one goal of launching is sales velocity is because if we increase our sales velocity again i'll just say it again we increase our sales velocity higher than the competitors then over time we will outrank them so if we get more sales in a time period than our competitors whether it's generally or for a certain keyword then we will outrank them right so if they're getting 10 sales per day with a certain keyword and we get 11 sales per day with that certain keyword and then eventually we're going to outrank them probably in the span of you know 14 days or so so it is that simple guys and that's the whole reason i'm kind of breaking it down this way so you can make it simple in your brain the more complex things are the harder it is so Okay, all you need to know now, you can, if you, if you thought that was just stupid, what I just said there, everything like that, just take away here. Okay, I'm launching because I want sales velocity. Sweet, got it. I understand now. And just move on with that, okay? So you simplify it, you have one goal of this whole thing. Okay, but now we need to talk about what affects sales velocity, okay? And I break this down into only two things. So the only two launching framework here, guys. So we're starting to get in the nitty gritty, the funner stuff. So thank you for hanging on with me throughout this process, but I just wanna make sure that I don't, I don't miss anything and you guys can come away from this actually having the value, having knowledge to make this actually work, right? Because if I just spewed a bunch of baloney and it doesn't work, then what's, what's the freaking point, okay? So this is just going deeper into things. So the first thing I wanna talk about for the only two framework is conversion rate. So this makes obvious sense. We increase sales velocity, then we can increase our conversion rate. So that's only gonna go hand in hand with it. So if we have you know 40% better conversion on our listing, that's gonna to lead to more sales, which gives us a higher sales velocity. So this is the first thing we need to think about when it comes to increasing our sales velocity, all right? So the first thing, and probably the most important thing that helps our conversion rate is the number of reviews, okay? So just think about it, when you're shopping on Amazon, you hop on there, you're looking around, and what I do personally is because I don't want to think about much. If I need something, I just need it. It's got 10,000 reviews. It's got a four and a half star review rating. I'm just going to buy it. Okay. Okay. So 10,000 people have told me this product's okay. So I'm just going to buy it because I don't want to think about it. Okay. Some people go deeper. Sometimes I do read reviews and I get really deep into it because I'm just a I'm kind of review snob and I understand how the system works too. So I go in there, I go to most recent reviews, kind of look around, but 99% of customers don't do that. They look at the number of reviews and that gives them social proof that their purchase is okay. If 10,000 other people said this purchase is okay, then I think this purchase is okay. And they make that decision based on that. So number of reviews is probably the number one factor in boosting your conversion rate on your listing. Okay, so how do we get more reviews? Well, we build a review system. Okay, so how can we do this? Uh, one way to do this is family and friends. Giving your product out to friends and family that can review your product. Uh, make sure, guys, because there are some, some things here that are uh, kind of in the gray area of Amazon terms of service. So do things at your own risk. Make sure you're doing research, everything like that. But I'm just going to tell you what I'm comfortable with and let you know the, the kind of pros and cons here. So friends and family. Uh, so Amazon doesn't want you to do anything that's going to incentivize reviews. But if you have no connection with these people, whether you know they haven't shared your same Wi-Fi before, uh, anything like that, then you're probably in the clear for your friend to purchase this and give you a review. Obviously, just ask them making an honest review let me know because i want to know if you actually liked it or not i just don't want some cheap five-star review i want to know if you liked it or not so this is a great way to get your first reviews and get some traction going there so friends and family is a good one to do that uh, be careful you know if you have thousands of friends and family which some people do don't be trying to get 100 reviews per week when you're only making so you know you're getting 100 sales from friends and family and you try to get 100 reviews and i was gonna be like no that that's not the way it works that review rates too high so keep that just just trickle them in a little bit over time as you're getting other sales from other sources whether that's just amazon itself their ppc platform again things we'll talk about uh, of how you can get those sales next is the vine program here so this requires a trademark and brand registry but if you watched any of my latest videos this you know is becoming a, a no-brainer to get a trademark get brand registered everything like that so the vine program is a paid program that you can get in there and get up to i believe it's 20 to 30 reviews uh, they are they're kind of the yelpers of amazon so they do leave some harsh ones sometimes they'll leave you like a six paragraph essay of why your product's awesome and then they'll give you three stars but that's the way it is most of them are if your product is good you're gonna get four and five star reviews which is fine don't get upset if you get this random two star a random you know three star with some vine program that's fine that's gonna happen anyways 
what you really care about is number of reviews. All right. So review rating does matter. We'll talk about that here in a second. But if you're in that stable place of 4.5 to five stars or 4.3 to five stars, then you're okay. Then it just matters about the number, the number of reviews, the higher that number goes, the better you're going to get some bad reviews, get over it. It's just going to happen. It's part of the Amazon process. So the vine program is a no brainer to me next QR codes. Okay. So this one, we can go deep into this and go so many avenues for this, but QR codes, you can put in your product inserts in your packaging to get a contact point to your customer to ask for an unbiased review. Okay. So not, you're not going to incentivize them or anything like that, but get them into your ecosystem to ask for reviews. There's whole setups of how you can do this, but as we know, QR codes, you scan those, they'll go to certain places, certain actions. If we can get a hold of those customers and ask for an unbiased review, then that's great. So that's a good review system to have there for your product inserts, or maybe you give them a free lead magnet, uh, you know, to tell them more about your product, everything like that. Next email list and funnel. So this kind of goes hand in hand with QR codes. So you have a QR code that goes to a funnel or it has them in your email list. But again, another way, another system to get them into your ecosystem, whether that's getting them on the email list, bringing them through a funnel where they get a lead magnet, wherever it may be. So you can communicate with these people. Like, how did you actually like the product? Like we got, we put a second product up there as well. Here, the link is for that. If you're, if you're curious and, and want to know more about that, and then you can ask them, you can, you know, Every now and then don't harass these people, but every now and then give them a little poke. Like, can you leave a review on Amazon? This really would help me out. I'm trying to, you know, small local business, everything like that. This would really mean a lot if you left a unbiased review on Amazon for us, because we know that you purchased this. Next, social media and organic or paid. So you can have little funnels go through your Instagram DMs. And you can ask people reviews there. So if they bought it, say there's some reason they reached out to you on Instagram, whether you're doing something with a lead magnet there or like DMS for these details, they can reach out to you. You can get them the link and then you know that person has purchased because you can you confirm that with the DMs, everything like that. The biggest thing, okay, kind of taking a step back and like the overall idea of what we're trying to do. Amazon doesn't allow us to talk to the customer. It's so freaking annoying. They control the customer journey. So we're trying to take that back. Okay. And again, this is all gray area of Amazon essentially, because they're trying to do everything in their power. They don't want us to contact the customer, whether that's for their own selfish reasons, which it is, and privacy concerns, which they, you know, it is as well. But more importantly, they want to control the whole experience, control the customer. So you can't steal customers and bring them on to your own platforms, essentially, is what they're trying to do. So we're trying to take this, this power back. So we're trying to get a customer to buy on Amazon and have us somehow link them to their name, somewhere where we can contact them at any time. Okay, so emails do this. Um, you know, QR codes and funnels are just ways to get them in to get the email or get them to Instagram or wherever it may be. Uh, Instagram just comes to mind first, right? There's tons of platforms we can do this with because you know they can reach out uh, to their DM. We see their profile, we know who they are, we can confirm they purchased by just talking to them in the DMs, and then we can ask them for honest feedback for that product. In, in you know seven to 14 days later and really ask them what they thought about the product okay so we're just trying to create these we call them a review system okay they're a system there there's something that's going to over time give you essentially access to your customers access to ask for as many reviews as you need to okay next so this you can do some paid ways too so you get influencers to push traffic to your instagram page uh you can get paid to do the same thing so just creating these systems and you got to be creative with these things too which i'll talk about a more to kind of go deeper into that uh next Automate review request. Okay, so this one is an easy one. Helium 10, uh, all these big platform seller uh, tools, they do this for you. So essentially, if you go into your manage orders on Amazon, you can click into the order. And then after like three days after they got the product or whatever, you can request a review. Uh, Amazon sends them a review request. Okay, so this is, takes a lot of time, as you know, to do this for all your orders, especially as you scale. So you can you can automate this with, with uh, Helium 10, which I'll, I'll link down in the description if you want a discount for that as well. Again, if you got Jungle Scout Viral Launch, I'm sure they all do this as well. Seller.tools does it as well, so don't go buying a, a software that you don't need if the other tool you have already does it, okay? So hopefully that makes sense, guys. So we're, we're trying to build a number of reviews there for conversion rate. The next thing that matters for conversion rate is review rating, which kind of goes hand in hand with number of reviews here. Again, if they have 10,000 reviews and they're all two stars, I'm probably not going to buy that product. So if your review rating gets so bad, number of reviews don't matter. So these are all things we need to essentially make sure we have, right? It's not just one. We can just have one and it's okay. No, we need all, a combination of all three. So keeping your review rate between 4.3 to five stars is ideal. Some categories you're going to have to sit in that, you know, 4.2 um, you know, just a little bit under, so don't go under 3.8 on this one. 
Um, so that's that's my handwriting. That's why I wrote this out in text first, because uh, so you guys didn't have to see that. So 4.3 uh, to five star reviews there. Uh, the best way you can do this, okay, you're gonna get bad reviews, just like I said. So listen to your customers, okay? So hopefully you did enough research before, because you're already listening to your customers or, or reading up on them when you're reading blogs and read one star reviews from, from other competitors, everything like that. So hopefully you took care of a lot of these issues that are already happening, but you're still gonna get bad reviews. And you need to listen to that feedback. Instead of getting angry, instead of being like, this isn't fair, this wasn't my fault, listen to them, okay? Idiot proof that it, that's that situation. So if you think it's out of your control, figure out creative ways to make sure that you are in control, that you idiot proof the process, or if it's just simple things that you can fix on next order, do that. Listen to your bad reviews, listen to your customers, okay? This is why it's also cool to have a, a review system where you can talk to customers, because maybe instead of leaving you a one-star review, you know, they just come back and be like, hey, I don't feel comfortable reviewing this, uh, this product did XYZ, it didn't work, it, it sucked. Uh, and you're like, oh, don't be mad at that. Don't yell at them. Just be like, oh, thanks for that feedback. That actually helps out a lot. And you can kind of tally these things and make improvements for the next order. So that's why it's so important to listen to your customers. Next, make improvements. Okay, so essentially these tie into each other. So we got to make these improvements to make sure your product is getting better and better and better. Again, that goes into listening to your customers, figuring out what is better there. Okay, see. Price point. Okay, so this is another thing that ties into conversion rate. Obviously, you got number of views, review rating here, and then we got price point. Okay, obviously, again, these all tie together. You can't just, all these have to work together. If one thing is astray, uh, none of this is going to work. Okay, so that's right. So say you have 10,000 reviews, but your price is $100 higher than everybody else's when it's a $10 product, of course, it's not going to work. So our price point has to be Okay, it has to be in the realm of what we're doing, okay? So we gotta price competitively, okay? So that just means we know our competitor's pricing and we're competitive in that aspect. Again, if we're adding more value, then we could be priced higher, but again, that goes into making sure we, we have the customer know this within our first three images, whether it's our title or bullets, and know that we are higher in expense because of this value add that we did. So we need to price competitively within that realm. I do like to start very close to the other guys to get some traction, maybe take a few of their sales and everything like that. Next is coupon and deals. Obviously we can boost conversion rates if we have a coupon, right? Cause it's just a little tick of dopamine. If you get 10% off, you know, if you've seen these guys, it's just a little box you check off uh, on that listing to get $10 off or a dollar off or 10% off. So coupons are a really good way just to get a little ticket dopamine and to get people to convert a little bit higher. Okay, so coupons are a great way. You can do like lightning deals, Amazon deals, things like that. You mess around with this in the deals category, which you just go to under marketing uh, or advertising under your Seller Central. Go down there. You can mess around with all those types of deals. Uh, and then D, supreme listing, insane product value and quality, which we talked about about pre-launch. So I won't go deeper into that. But the three things we need to worry about here for the conversion rate is number of views, review rating, and price point. Uh, and then supreme listing, insane product value and quality. Again, we're all things to help with conversion rate. So the higher conversion rate we have, the more sales velocity we're going to have and add and everything like that. Also, we have to take into account too, if we're trying to rank up, well, conversion rate is a big factor in how Amazon's algorithm works. So if we have a conversion rate of 20% and the other guy has 10%, then we will get a boost because Amazon says, we are more relevant. I'll scroll this up a little bit. Sorry. Uh, we are more relevant to the customer than this product because it's only converting at 10%. So this is what the customers want. So you get a boost in the rankings there. Okay. Cause we think about, when you think about Amazon's algorithm, just think about this. They're always going to be looking for and doing ways to give the customer the best possible option for them. So if they're typing something in, making sure they have the best option pop up for them, whether that's your, you know, very competitive pricing, number of reviews and better conversion rate everything like that okay uh, there's some other factors in there but um yeah let's keep going down here so next is traffic so hard part so we got the conversion rate dialed in we understand what goes into that the higher we can boost the conversion rate the higher we can do sales velocity and then this is like it's like a flywheel effect too right so that's why i like to talk about conversion rate first because if we could get this taken care of then the traffic will be more efficient so we'll set to spend less money to get more results so traffic is the next part of sales velocities so how do we get more traffic to your listing the things you guys have probably been waiting for is this part of the video right here so traffic let's just go down this 
one by one here and it is ppc okay so ppc is the first one we should all try we should all get familiar with yes there's gonna be a learning curve to all of these and i'll talk about that too in, in the pros and cons kind of section of of what we should do what we shouldn't do what's best for you and everything like that but ppc we do need to try this because it's amazon's platform and it's a good way to kind of test the grounds, test out keywords that potentially are really good for your product and get those initial sales, figure that out. Cause this is like the low hanging fruit guys. So if this works in some capacity, PPC for our first launch, that's that's a huge sign. If we get 60, 80% ACoST and we have zero reviews with PPC, that's fantastic, okay? That That's a great sign. I know it's not profitable, but the fact that you can get sales at will on Amazon, that's fantastic. That, that means there is enough demand here. We just need to dial some things in and, and work on their conversion rate. And then our PPC will skyrocket. So that's what I'm talking about there. So we first start with discovery campaigns. So this is like us casting out a large net. This is usually in the form of phrase campaigns, broad campaigns, auto campaigns, and kind of testing out the waters of like what keywords work for us. Then we can see what works and then double down on that. So that's usually when we take the keywords that are working and then we put them into exact campaigns and really get that to go. So I'm not gonna go crazy in depth there with PPC. I do have full tutorial videos, like hour long videos, right? So a lot of these things, like they take an hour to really get deep inside of this. So make sure you take a note there and say, I need to go back to uh, the PPC video to get more in depth with what Cameron's talking about there. If you need any videos, just give me a comment down below of like what you're looking for. And I can share those videos with you as well to make sure you get to the place you wanna be. Okay, so PPC is huge. And then next video ads. So this is really big too, kind of low hanging fruit. Uh, they are more cost per click. So it is gonna cost a little bit more, but if you're in a niche that doesn't really have competitors doing this, this is a huge advantage and you can really take advantage of that. So this does require a trademark and brand registry, but once you get this going, you can convert at a really high rate. And again, these videos are gonna need to highlight your benefits and be from someone who knows what they're doing when creating e-commerce ads. So PPC, again, is something we wanna definitely try. And I'm gonna show you kind of, again, when I make you the launch plan here, I'm gonna show you what you should be trying, what's necessary, uh, and everything like that. Next is friends. So friends and family, again, we talked about this for reviews. The same thing with, with sales velocity, right? If you had a good uh, group of friends and family, you can kind of increase your sales velocity to help rank up a little bit, help get a bit of traction going for your sales velocity. Tell Amazon, like, at least you're relevant and you start to rank up a little bit there. Uh, so friends and family is a good way to get some traction there for traffic. Next is giveaways. So this is higher risk now, guys. So this is something that Amazon's really starting to frown upon. They've took away their partnerships with like things like rebate key, rebate here, because they don't want to be affiliated with this. They don't want people using this to essentially mess with their sales ranking, right? Mess with their, their organic ranking, mess with their sales velocity in artificial ways. There are ways from what I've seen and experience and things I'm just kind of seeing around right now, there are still ways you can do this right now, but it's higher risk and you should, you know, weigh that yourself because Amazon, again, is trying to crack down on this. But again, I'm seeing people still getting away with this. So again, you use your risk. I just wanna give you all the options and you're an adult, you're a business owner, and you can kind of weigh what your risk tolerance is there. Okay, so number three here uh, for C is Facebook ads and mini chat. So you can do giveaways with this. I would avoid this. This is a complicated mess. This is would take just as much time as doing anything else, in, like running the full business to become a Facebook ads and mini chat master to do giveaways. It, it, you just don't have time in the freaking day to do that. It's so complicated that it's just not worth it in my eyes. Uh, next, another way to serve traffic is social media organic. Again, guys, I'll, I'm gonna tell you how to put these links all together in greater detail here in a little bit with the launch plan, but I just wanna go through all the traffic sources that I use, I like, had good experience with, and I think still work currently on Amazon today. Now there is, again, I, I just, there's a couple of cool things here that you probably never heard of, but essentially, there's no secret ways, there's no hack or anything like that to you know, boost traffic for free, anything like that. No, this is a business. This does take real work and everything like that. So social media, organic is the first time I talk about when it comes to social media. So this is a great way like YouTube, IG, TikTok is huge right now, Pinterest, Facebook groups. This is all dependent on your product niche, your category of what, you know, what social media platform could be better. If you're in the knickknacks or home decor, Pinterest is probably better for you. If you're in pets and uh, cats and, and dogs, it, 
stuff like that. There's a lot of Facebook groups on that stuff. Uh, if you're into like little niche trendy items, TikTok would be great. If you're in fashion or something like that, IG would be great. YouTube is great for a lot of utility products. So things that uh, serve purpose, solve problems. You know, think of YouTube, like why do people go there and search there? Every search usually starts with how to, how do I do this? How to do this? Okay, so YouTube is a great thing for utility products because you can position your product as a lot of solution to problems on there. So organic YouTube, IG, TikTok, Pinterest, Facebook groups, this is something that you won't get immediate returns in, but if you start building up slowly, you will start that. TikTok is probably the exception there. You know, I've known people who just go viral with a really trendy product and they make a lot of money doing that. So otherwise you gotta build up your your organic following as well. I, I like to use my YouTube channel that you're watching currently as a, a example of this. If you build an organic YouTube channel for your niche, the first first couple of videos, you're just not gonna get any views or any traffic. That's just that's how it is. You gotta work your way up slowly. Uh, so another thing I wanna talk about here is, do you put yourself in position? Are you, like, are you the face of the brand or it, do you brand the, the actual brand You know, and everything like that? I prefer, and I think what works best is you brand a person. So influencer marketer is huge. We'll talk about that, but essentially you become your own influencer as the brand owner. Okay. So this is really big. This is kind of huge. I would do this, but there are other ways to, to avoid that. You can just do how to videos and not really tell the people that you're the face of the brand. I know that's hard for a lot of people. Uh, IG, Pinterest, Facebook groups, you can hide yourself a little bit better behind walls. TikTok, you got to get on those videos. I guess IG reels as well. But so if you get deeper in these and grow a following, you can have unlimited amounts of traffic, which is fantastic. And you can just get better and better and better. It just takes some time to slowly build out uh, your following and actually get traction for that. Okay. So this is a skill. This is probably the hardest part of social media is building an organic following just because the traffic becomes free, right? So everybody wants free traffic and that's why, you know, it takes so long. It takes, it's, it's a lot of hard work to kind of build that up, but if that's something you could do, that's, that would blow your business up and essentially let you scale for free. Okay, next is social media paid. So this, again, paid problem here is you got to put money into it. Okay, so you know YouTube ads, IG ads, TikTok ads, Pinterest ads, Facebook groups. And what I mean by Facebook groups there is you pay the person that owns it. I guess this would be more influencer marketing too as well, but you can pay people who own the group to advertise your product or get it listed there, uh, put it in the description, maybe like a discount code in there as well. Pinterest ads for real, TikToks, uh, IG, YouTube, all ads you can run. You could probably throw Facebook ads in here as well. Uh, again, each source is gonna be different depending on the product. You know, YouTube ads is probably a bit more expensive uh, product, a little bit more complicated somewhere to, to show a video ad that's just, you know, people just looking at videos all day, kind of break it down. So I think those would be your higher priced items for YouTube. IG would probably be uh, a blend between fashion, uh, trendier items, things that are gonna get clicks off the platform. So I think of Facebook ads and, and Instagram, if you're just trying to get like some quick wins there, it's gonna be this, these trendier types of products or uh, clothing material. I think IG is better, be best for that. And then Facebook's better just for the trendier items. Same thing with TikTok, trendy things that can go viral, things that are just, you know, are really entertaining on quick format there. Uh, Pinterest ads, probably better for you again, your home decor, your knickknacks, things that are a little bit more customizable, things that are a little bit more for the home. Um, you kind of, you, you understand what I'm saying there. So Pinterest ads are good through there. Facebook groups, again, whatever there's a Facebook group for, you can advertise there. Okay. Uh, next, social media. So next, social media influencer. So you're essentially just going to all these platforms and you're, instead of being the person that, that leads the charge, you're paying someone to, on their channel, like their YouTube channel, their IG uh, profile, their TikTok profile, their Pinterest profile, whatever it may be, Facebook groups, uh, Pinterest, I'm not sure actually how this works. I've never done an influencer on Pinterest or if that's even a thing, but moving on here. Uh, anyways, so paying people on their channel, whoever traffic, whoever, maybe a little bit more personable, people who don't mind being on the uh, the face of anything, they can advertise your product for you, okay? So this is a great way to kind of hack the system. One thing I will recommend here is don't pay too much for this. Uh, you know, maybe start with people who will do it for free, just with free product uh, or like a hundred dollars for, uh, you know, 
talking about your product, placing it on YouTube or, or IG, things like that. Don't go all out and pay someone like $10,000 to do this. No, you need to test who works and get really good at this. Again, these are all, these are all skills, guys. These are all things we need to learn how to do. And like, there is no cheat sheet. There is no free way to do this. Like if you want to do PPC, you got to learn how to do this. If you want to go for friends and family, maybe that's the only hack out there. Giveaways, again, a skill of how this works and, you know, links and, and understand the platforms, how to get people to, to purchase and, and rank up and use more momentum in your, your avenue. Social media, same thing. That's a huge skill to learn how to do. Uh, social media pay, that's a huge skill. You have to pay to how to learn to do that, essentially. Same thing with social media. So you want to, everywhere we can get risk down, the better, okay? So risk down and kind of bootleg the business we want to do, okay? So just these things are not easy. They're, they're not. I'm sorry, guys. There's no cheat sheet for this. And hopefully this, this helps out kind of give you a layout of, of all the different ways you can get traffic. And then if you, you really gravitate to an area, you can really focus on that, which we'll talk about the launch plan. I will and can go deeper into these topics. Maybe I already have videos on them uh, on my channel. Maybe I need to make new videos. Again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rely on you in the comments. If you need to go deeper into something, you want to go deeper on a certain category. If I get enough comments talking about, you know, I want to go deeper in social media paid or social media organic. I can do that for you, but I want to give you the entire framework, the entire layout of how this works. And that way you can kind of choose and pick what you want to do and go from there and just learn instead of showing you all these strategies and overwhelming you, you can pick what you want and just learn those things. Okay. So seven is sales funnels and email lists. So we talked about this with, uh, your review systems, but essentially you can build landing pages. So essentially a website that's just for your product and you optimize to get get sales. So I, I know this one, this is probably the most complicated one on here that people don't know about, but click funnels. If we figure this out, like build a website and drive traffic there, this is where the e-commerce businesses blow up. Like this is where things get crazy uh, and are awesome and fun, but it's a little different than how to intertwine it with Amazon and everything like that. I'd use it more for like lead magnets, getting people on the email list. So you can, you can have a list to drive more traffic to your, your Amazon store. I really like that. Um, MailChimp and Active Campaign are just platforms where you can put, uh, you can have emails and do email automations, everything like that. Again, another whole skill you have to learn there. So again, I can go deeper on that if you guys are interested in that. I think this is the one, this is probably the most fascinating, but definitely the hardest one of them all. Uh, maybe not lead magnets and like MailChimp, Active Campaign, but like actually selling through ClickFunnels, but using ClickFunnels to get people in lead magnets uh, is actually not that hard at all. Uh, next is Amazon Live. So this is a new program uh, on Amazon, which I'm going to show you on screen right now. So for an Amazon now, I'll show you this Amazon Live, which is cool. It's, it's fairly new uh, and it's got you know, its own pros and cons, just like everything else. So if we go down to programs and features and go down to Amazon Live here, sometimes you gotta hit a button and, and unlock all this. Um, and we go to live here. We can see that there's this you probably saw this on the homepage too. Uh, I've been seeing this around, but there's essentially influencers that are just doing live streaming videos about products on Amazon. And you can see down here, like these are the products they're gonna talk about. And if you click on these, uh, you can literally click on this and it'll open it up. So we can pay these influencers to talk about our products and get traffic up from here. And we can see there's 101 live followers here and we have different creators. So obviously every creator is kind of a different kind of niche and, and kind of figure out like, you know, where, who, who fits your niche, right? For your type of product. So again, not every product's perfect for this, but if we find someone who has a good following and knows what they're doing and has an audience that would really resonate with your product, this is a great place to be. Okay. So you can reach out to these people and, and um, you know, do it manually. You can also use a service called rebate here and uh, you can make an influencer campaign. And a lot of these people are set up within here. So you can just contact them through rebate. Uh, so that's another way you can possibly do that. But yeah, guys, this is a cool new way uh, to kind of get essentially another influencer platform on Amazon, right? Cause think about it. They are on Amazon to shop, like their intent is to shop on there. So if they're watching a live video on Amazon about products, they're buying stuff. They're, you know, it's essentially like Amazon's version of the, the shopping networks at home, people watching that at home and calling in. But no, if they're watching this on Amazon, this is because they just wanna buy more products on Amazon and it's gonna be a great place to put your product, okay? So going back uh, into our uh, notes here, we see that I mentioned rebate here, so that's what I was talking about there. And of course, guys, there's other many creative ways that you might know about. You know, there's um, there's blog sites, so affiliate blog sites you can do. Maybe you'll write your own website and you have your own blogs, and you you know you build up uh, SEO on these blogs to drive traffic to Amazon for 
your product. I mean, this list goes on and on and on, but we just need to understand how to drive traffic, what are the different ways to do this, and of course, have a good conversion rate, because these are the only things that the only two things that matter, right? The only two things that matter when it comes to increasing our sales velocity, which in turn increases our ranking, which in turn increases our organic sales, okay? So the whole point of launching, of course. So I sound like a broken record here, but let's go on to building your launch plan. So this might make sense and bring everything together. If you guys have toughened this thing out, got this far, let me know in the comments down below because kudos for you for actually taking the time to, to go deep in this knowledge. I know this isn't the easiest, the funnest lesson that I've ever done, but so, so congrats guys. Like you're putting the work in it. I love to freaking see that. It's, it's all about who can put in the work at the end of the day, right? So building your launch plan. So hopefully this will help us kind of wrap everything up here and you can know where to go from here. So the first thing we do, so this is for you guys. So this is where you're kind of writing notes on your end and kind of building your own launch plan. So you can follow along here, kind of write out your own uh, plan here. So this is essentially what we want to do when we launch a product uh, or we have a product that's stalled out. But essentially what it's our game plan. It's our, it's our, it's a plan of action for when we get our product on Amazon, like what are we doing? So that way we have a step-by-step -step plan. We're not just guessing and checking. We're not just hoping and praying for the best, but an actual plan to get actual results. And if we have an actual plan and see, even it doesn't work, we can adjust and adapt because we know we've tried this, we've tried this. Now we plug this in and plug this in and see if that works. Again, I'm going to talk about that a little bit more here, but this is what this is guys. This is what I use. This is kind of how I think about me launching products and everything like that on Amazon. So the first thing we do in our launch plan is we pick a review system. Okay, so a review system, just like we talked about up here. So we go ahead and go grab all these types of different review systems and we build that out for us. So like what, what are we gonna do? Like based on uh, what we feel comfortable on, what we think works the best, what we have access to, what our skill set is, what is our review system, okay? So what I recommend first for anybody who is stuck and, and doesn't really know what to do first is you definitely need to use your friends and family as much as possible to get reviews. You definitely need to utilize the Vine program to get reviews. We need to automate review requests here. And I've even linked in the Helium 10 link there. Uh, it's called Seller Assistant there of where that actual tool is. Again, if you need Helium 10 at a discount, it'll be down below in the description. And the biggest thing here, guys, is we learn, we execute, we view results, then switch one out or add one more, okay? So this is the great way to start. So say these things are going well, they're automated, it's going super well, and you just wanna add something in because you, you've learned. Okay, so now we go back up to here and we grab, okay, so how would email lists and funnels work? How would QR codes work? How would social media work in this? And we think about it, we build out the system and we implement it for our product. So that's what you do next there. Next with our launch plan is we pick our sources of traffic. So I ideally recommend we pick three sources of traffic at first, okay? so. It could be friends and family. So these are, again, I'm talking about what I think is best right now, maybe the easiest ones right now. Uh, PPC, then Amazon Live. Okay, so we try all these three things at the same time, essentially. So we're, we're learning PPC, uh, we're learning about Amazon Live, we're using friends and family, using these tactics to grab traffic to our listing to see if they work. But we need to go in and see, like, is this right here, is this giving us sales? Like, are we getting sales from this? Yes or no? If not, is it a, it's a learning curve thing? Do we need to get better at this? Or is it just PPC is not right for my product at this time? That's kind of how we build off this and, and really start to understand how, how these things works and, and really figure out what works for us. Because maybe you're just really bad at this and you need to get better. Okay, so that's, that's great, fantastic. That's what you're trying to do here. Maybe this isn't right for a product. So we we cross this out and then we, we go back up to our list and we grab some other form of traffic. We learn how to do that and we implement. But just know guys, there is a learning curve for this stuff. Like it is, it is tough. Uh, so don't give up on it right away. Just because it doesn't work right away doesn't mean it, it won't work. But if you've been trying it for, you know, this is usually uh, a launch plan is usually for two months is kind of where I do it. Especially if you're just beginning, you can bring it down to one month to test these things out, but like you're gonna need at least one month of, of running full traffic in these sources to see if it works or not, right? So say you do two months, because you're just beginning, and this is bringing in a ton of sales and revenue, getting some ranking up, so this is a plus. Uh, source of PPC, yes, it's at 60% A cost, uh, so advertising cost of sales. So it's got, you sell something for $10, it costs you $6 to, to get a sale, but at least it's working and we're getting some sales velocity there. And we're grabbing some reviews from our review system because what happens is if we get a sale here, this goes back into our review system with the automated review request, the VIA program or anything else we do up here. And 
then we just get more reviews. So the sales are almost an investment. So the 60% ACoS is an investment to get, you know, potentially more reviews here. That's why it's important to have a review system. Okay. And then we go to Amazon Live. We tried this, but no, we just $100 here, $200 down. This isn't working at all. So we cross this out. Okay. And then we add our next traffic source here or replace ones that aren't working. So we're going to replace this one. Okay. Cause we are getting really good at PPC friends and family about tanked out. So we need to go grab two more traffic sources. Okay. So I'm going to erase all this guys. So it's not so uh, gross here. Do that real quick. And then we go back up here and we pick new two new sources of traffic. Okay. So I've always wanted to be famous on YouTube. So I'm going to pick that and start growing that, or I'm really good at paid traffic or really interested, or I think TikTok could be really easy here. Uh, or, you know, I want to learn more about sales funnels, or maybe I know about an SEO platform or affiliate website. Okay. So we just go back down here and then we plug it in. So we're going to do uh, TikTok here organic and, and learn how to do that. And then friends and family are kind of bashed in here. So maybe we're also at the same time doing TikTok. We're doing Instagram and we're gonna do reels because you can just take the same TikTok video and then plug it into reels. Oh wait, you can also do that for YouTube with YouTube shorts. So now you can make one TikTok video, put it in IG reels and then YouTube shorts. And okay, so now you are creating you guys can see that. I'm uh, sorry about the terrible high rating. So now you're creating one piece of content that's going to IG and YouTube. So you're going three organic platforms at the same time. And obviously you link your links to your products uh, in your YouTube, your TikTok, your IG, then people can get to that. Hopefully that makes sense guys of how you build this thing out here. Uh, one thing I do want to talk about again, take this guys, take this. I'm, I'm going to eventually link this down below so you can get a copy of it as well. Uh, but I just don't know when that is. So if you, if you do want a copy, you think it'd be helpful and uh, want me to do it as fast as possible. Uh, just let me know down in the comments down below and I'll try as fast as possible to get that out to you guys. But take take the review plan, how I've laid it out, and you can use this to build your own framework and use this as well. Uh, some other things I want to talk about here is the Amazon Keyword Tracker and Helium 10. Again, Viral Launch, Jungle Scout, whatever you're using has this though. Don't go buy a new software, but I use Helium 10 personally. Uh, so the Helium 10 Amazon Keyword Tracker will actually, you can plug in your keywords that you think customers are using to buy your product, or you see this on PPC or wherever, and you can track your organic rankings again, because that's what we're trying to do, right? We're trying to boost sales velocity to move in organic rankings. So this app, this program will allow you to see if you move from 20, you know, say your organic rank 20 for a keyword, and then you move to 15, then 10, you know, you're on the right track. You know, you're making progress. Maybe it doesn't reflect in sales right away, right? Because you're not going to see this huge boost from 20 to 10 in sales. You're going to see that when you get to spot one, spot two, spot three. But if you're moving from 20 to 10, you're doing something that Amazon algorithm likes and you should keep doing that or doubling down on it. So that's a good way to, to if we go back uh, to my iPad here, we can see that this is a good way to kind of track progress uh, on these fronts. If we're driving traffic here, like we going up in keyword rankings. Okay, so this is what I described right here. And that's the link for the keyword tracker. Okay, some final thoughts here, guys, is, you know, this, kind of reflecting on everything we're talking about, the more traffic you can combine together, the better. Okay. So just finishing up the launch plan and my thoughts there. So prove that it can convert though, or else you'll waste your time and money. So just like I talked about, we need to see if these are actually working for beginners. I suggest starting with just three sources of traffic. Like I have laid out here, there will be a learning curve before you can actually tell if someone of uh, these strategies will work or not. Give one to two months with your initial plans, then plug and play and just add when ready. Okay. So same thing as I talked about, I just want to make sure I covered every single thing for you guys, but yeah, guys, I hope this one helps. I hope this kind of gives you a better idea of what you're trying to do, what the goal is, everything like that, how I kind of think about this, what sources of traffic are, what sources of conversions are, and what really matters to drive your product on Amazon, how to launch a product without spending thousands on ads, or, you know, there's ways to do that and be successful, but there's also ways to not have to do that uh, as well. So I just want to lay out the whole game plan for you. Uh, if this one was helpful and you want more videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button. This tells me that hey, I'm doing a good job and you guys are actually getting value from this uh, as well. If there's any other things you want me to go deeper on, let me know as well down in the comments. I'll try to reply to this within the next couple, you know, two to three days to get you guys what you need uh, and to kind of take tally of what video I should make next to go deeper in this uh, as well as I'll try to get this lead magnet to you in some shape or form uh, to make sure that you can use it yourself as well. All right, guys, that's it. I hope this was helpful and see you on the next one. Bye.